Hi all, Graham here. Uh, here is something a bit different. I had a chat with a, a young fella from uh, London, really keen on Saga, just got playing into it. He's got some great new ideas on how we can promote our game and keep it going and get it to grow. Anyway, here it is. Have a listen. Tell me what you think. Right. Hello, Louis. How are you? Hey, Graham. I'm good, thanks. How's it going? Yeah, all right. Nice to meet you at last. Um, so you're a big Saga man as well. Yeah, massive fan. Uh, only got input relatively recently in the last year or so. Uh, actually, during lockdown, I think, like a lot of, of other people. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's a blast. Having a lot of fun with it. So you, you never played version two, version one then? No, uh, completely fresh-faced newbie here, really. Um, I knew a couple of friends who played Saga sort of years ago, back in, back in the days of first edition. Uh, it looked like a lot of fun. I just never got to kind of try it out. I was playing things like... Uh, you know, 40k and stuff uh, mm. in, uh, in my youth, much to my <laughs> shame. Um, no, no, wrong with that. Yeah. It's just a good, it's a good <laughs> set of rules, to be fair. Yeah, it's very, yeah that, that was my kind of intro into the hobby. And then uh, during lockdown, I started looking a bit more seriously at uh, some of my fantasy armies and thinking, well, actually, why don't I look at sort of going a bit more historical? And uh, yeah, and Saga beckoned and uh, never looked back. Mm. So so when you in lockdown then, so what did you do? Just Did you play online or, or virtually or how did you, how did you do that? Um, I didn't really get on so much with the play online thing for some reason, uh, although I've got a lot of friends who did, and I know it, it kept the hobby alive for a lot of people, which is great. Mm. Uh, for me, it was much more sort of the hobby, like the hobby itself, painting and modelling sort of thing, was more what kind of kept me sane a bit. So, um, mm. you know, I, 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 I had some, some stuff I've been using in Kings of War and uh, Warhammer Fantasy and, and that sort of thing, so, so uh, the- you know. How many questions, how many, how many armies did you paint in lockdown? There's one for you. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> <laughs> how many did you do? How many, how many saga armies did you paint in lockdown? Well, um, I definitely repurposed a couple of fantasy ones over. I know I took my, I had a sort of nightly force and a force of undead. And I, I, I basically just switched those over. So that was quite easy. Um, started painting up some pagan roots, some, some Vikings. Um, I mean, when do you finish an army? Because, you know, you, you start it, you say, right, I'm just going to do four points of this, and then it turns into six points, and then suddenly, you know, six points plus, well, actually, wouldn't it be nice to add some mercenaries to it? And suddenly you end up with, with 12 points of uh, hairy Vikings that you're never going to use. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always, I always say seven or eight, I think, because you've got a bit of flexibility, but I painted um, a complete Gallic army. I did 12 points of them, 10 points of uh, Romans, um, Numidians, I did them as well. I did loads of Age of Hannibal because that came out about the same time, didn't it? Have you tried yeah, any, of the, any of the Hannibal um, books at all? That's, that's the only universe today that I've not tried out. Um, it looks really, really fun, but it, it's just the one that I've not managed to get to grips with yet. Although I think that one's got the, uh, is it Big Saga, Epic Saga or something? Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I've tried it. I've tried it. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What's your take um, on it? Um, too big. It's a bit too slow for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, the game, the turns take too long. Um, don't know. It's, it suits everybody. It all depends. All depends who you're playing. If you're playing someone who knows the rules well, knows the battle boards well, you can whip through it. If you're playing someone who you've got to guide a little bit, it can be quite slow. And also, you, you end up having if you, almost like you could have three or four, four or five point um, war bands, and um, each of them needs management. And, and it just gets very slow. So if you think each one, each turn has got six different elements to it rather than two, and you're still playing six turns, it's slow. So it's an all dayer really. Um, saying that, I do like the look of it. I, th- I think it looks absolutely brilliant when you've got lots and lots of figures on the table. Um, but, yeah, it's a um, massive thing. Yeah. yeah, it does I mean, look I, good. I guess it's that sort of thing where the, the beauty of Saga is that you can get through quite a, you know, quite a, a decent sized game in a fairly short Kind of space of time and, and the armies aren't that big you know you're, you're only looking at kind of maximum 70 80 figures per side mm. most people like 40 50 so i guess it, it's just that's where the rule set has it, it's kind of sweet spot yeah i do and also i, I think the other strength of saga is that there's this crossover between factions so if you've got a norman faction you can start playing crusaders and exactly yeah. if you've got vikings you can if Vyom's vikings <laughs> even, even the dirty rust you can play you know you can play you know, to a degree and um yeah. I, I think that and, and like the the arab factions you can play any one of three or four there and i think that that is a, a real power of the rules i mean if, yeah you can be precious about them so always got them on the wrong helmet or the wrong shield but uh, it's a game yeah, to game yeah. isn't it 
game's a game, and I think Saga is much more of that. It's sort of a uh, historical fantasy, you know? I mean, the name of the game is, is literally Saga. And mm. what were the songs? They were tall tales that a bunch of Vikings sat around a campfire telling, you know, about great adventures and, like I say, tall tales that may, maybe did or didn't happen exactly the way they told them. So why shouldn't the game be a, a little bit on the exaggerated side too? Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I, I've, I've been playing it since version one, quite early doors, and um, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Not yeah. version two, you've you join the right time to join it because version two, the enhancements for the rules, in my opinion, made it far more playable. And some of the gaming elements that are in version one, which you used, I, play, I did play in a few tournaments on occasion, mm, really? Yeah. And um, they, they seem to have taken it out and um, it makes the game far more playable and enjoyable for that, for all of that. So that's interesting because um, I had a, a game with my growing, kind of slowly growing club uh, over the weekend and I played a chap who come from first edition that was the first time that he played second oh. um and that was actually it was really interesting seeing how much the game had changed because we had a, a lot of weird rules interactions where something you know we, we were playing something under the second ed rule set and he kind of you know um still had first edition very much in his head it really does sound like it was a, a very different game back then mm. i mean there was all sorts of ping, ping pinning moves if you went within someone within vs um yeah you, you got pinned also it was if you contacted someone in melee um only the figures within vs of a contact for melee so would count so all of a sudden people were trying to swarm around figures and there was all sorts of jiggery pokery gotcha. and, and, and and now they've taken they sit they've taken that all out of it and, and and for my mind it, it makes things a lot simpler and and quicker so and also i think, I, so, yeah. I, I think it makes it easier for the, for the newbie to play rather than version one and i think that's possibly the big difference that's the most consistent bit of feedback i've had because i've been introducing the game to quite a lot of friends uh around here and the first thing people say is wow you know th this is simple but not too simple there's still a lot of, kind of nitty-gritty to get your teeth into in mm -hmm. the way that they, they battle boards work and fatigue and stuff but it is it is very much something that you can pick up in in an afternoon and feel you know, pretty comfortable playing to a reasonable standard sort of thing yeah so let me ask you so where, where are you where do you war game so i'm based in london um and the guys i play with are based pretty much everywhere i mean we've got a a bunch of guys in west and east london a couple in south london uh we've got a couple of sort of uh uh friends of the club so to speak who are coming through their field from potter's bar and from what, birmingham what, what club are you so we don't really have a name yet. Uh, we started as a bunch of friends who were, who were kind of drifting between systems. We've been playing Kings of War for a while, um, other kind of sci-fi games, and then we happened upon Saga kind of all at the same time together. We thought, right, this is, this is a really good thing. Um, obviously, it's just four of us, so how can we build this a bit? Um, and what we did was we, you know, we went on the Facebook groups, on, on the Discord pages and stuff, and started to, to kind of advertise a bit and get people together. Uh, then we found the London Wargaming Guild, which you've probably heard of, which is mm. pretty big. It's got a big footprint, um, especially in terms of things like, you know, Age of Sigma and uh, 40k and stuff. Uh, but it turns out they've got a really, really big scene for historicals, and a lot of those guys um, have been getting into Saga in the last month or so. So it's, it's really been a really fortuitous kind of coincidence Timing. that we all you know, mm. just came together at the right moment. So there's no, not much talk of kind of a name yet. I mean, I, I, I may, maybe we'll sort of blend in with the London Wargaming Guild guys. But yeah. um, right now, it's just a bunch of saga nutcases, really. <laughs> so <laughs> so you're, you're, you're like, a, I suppose, a central London collective. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're very inclusive. We, we don't really, we're not limited to central London. I mean, we'll play no, pretty much where, anywhere. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, you, so you travel. So have you played in many competitions then? Or not yet? Um, I did a competition, this is going to sound really weird, I did a competition in the Czech Republic. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I used to live there briefly, and it was, uh, there were some very, very keen players there, so I jumped in with that. Got absolutely, utterly tabled, uh, completely squashed, uh, tried running Tijuana Gordo and got torn to pieces, but had a great time, and um, picked it up again back in London, and I'm hoping to go to the Grand Melee later on this year. Mm, it's right, because Grand Melee is run by our club. Because I, I Oh, is it really? Yeah, I, I, um, I play mostly at Reading War Games on a Wednesday night, yeah. and uh, Warfare, which is their convention, uh, hosts Grand Melee. Um, so, okay. I, don't, I must admit, I don't play in it because I'm generally having to work the bring and buy or, or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but you, as a club member, you've got to do your bit. But I also play at North yeah. Farnborough as well, and there's a there's a small uh, saga community there as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm surrounded by people who play, but. Um, it is. It does appear to be growing as well, which is really strange. It's uh, 
for something that's been around so long, it, it seems to be picking up a little bit of steam, which which is great for me. It seems but, to be a bit, yeah. I mean, I think, um, I, I don't know what the kind of mood in the historical community is about that, but I think the Age of Magic supplement really helped with that. Because it kind of... Really? That's interesting you say that. Um, okay, I don't want to be controversial. Um, no, go be as controversial as you like. I mean, I can <laughs> speak for really, is in my circle, it was the kind of, you know, that was the kind of thing that flipped the... Um, Went from 40k, the 40k players in. Uh, yeah, I suppose they would buy into it more from that. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. tried it. I tried it and um, I found it a bit fiddly, actually. And in the end, I sold the book and all the, the dice and everything. Oh, really? Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I've got, you know, I've got all the other... I've got armies from all, all the other four books, so it's, it's not really a big problem yeah. for me. But uh, if, it's, if it floats your boat, then fair play. I mean, I would say... The clever part of Age of Magic for me was the way that you can use, if you've got a Lord of the Rings army, you could use that. Or if you can you've got, yeah, yeah, and you can use yeah. different different periods. And they, they can, you know, if you've got an Elfton army or, or you know, it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. it, Great. It, it, and I, th I think that was really clever by Studio Tom Hawks. That was a real... <laughs> can you just bear with me a minute? Sorry. Oh, it's good. Real life, it's the cat at the door. <laughs> oh dear. Um, he's been howling at the door for the last five minutes. He just hates closed doors. So he's just insistent on joining in on, on the podcast, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, I thought Age of Magic from that point of view was really clever, but it just, it, it just, yeah. it just didn't float my boat really. So <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I, think. I mean, for us, what happened was. Um, a lot of guys who played with fantasy armies, like, you know, Chaos Dwarfs and Elves and stuff, they sort of said, okay, look, Star look, looks great, but can I use what I've already got? And so we said, yes, you can, absolutely, just jump in. And the effect of basically being a sort of gateway drug. I mean, I think, like like you say, Age of Magic is a bit it's a bit fiddlier. Um, and it's maybe not got quite the depth the historical stuff has. But what it's done is it sort of funnel people into Star Yeah, then once to, I think so. I agree with you. To oh. mix universes and stuff, they say actually, okay, you know, it's cool playing dwarves, but now I want to try Vikings or Yom's Vikings or, or you know whatever. Mm. So it's kind of a win -win yeah. I, I, I think I think uh, as a as a strategic move, I thought it was very very smart, uh, very very smart by them, and I think it, it got a lot of people buying into it. So Absolutely. so so what books do you play then? Do you uh, do you play all four books? Was it three four books? Yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. How many is it? Um, so I mean, I got uh, I've got uh, my so Asia, Asia Vikings. What what factions do you prefer in the Age of Vikings? The very first yeah. one, then. Oh, uh, so Vikings. Uh, oof, I mean, obviously, everyone starts off playing Vikings. I think I'm pretty sure most people have a Vikings somewhere in their collection. <laughs> um, I probably put them right now. I'm a little bit torn. I really like the Roos. Uh, they feel a little bit cheeky to play, especially when you're playing against a newer player, because a lot of their mechanics are kind of based around shutting down the other player. Mm. which can sometimes feel a little bit not counterintuitive necessarily it can feel a little bit rough if you're trying to introduce somebody to the game mm. and your whole battle board is based around basically closing down their play so i've been uh playing around a bit with the vikings but i'd really like to try young's vikings thing they look really fun and i've got a norman army in the wings which i think will be mm. very fun to play around with the movement shenanigans, uh, shenanigans and stuff there <laughs> so it's interesting that the norman i think the norman battle board in my opinion is probably the easiest to play um, oh, really? and, and I also think it's the easiest to introduce someone into the game. But the, the downside, I, 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 it's um, maybe in my hands. <laughs> uh, I don't use it so well, um, but I don't think it's the strongest either. Um, and if you, uh, North Scale for me is just like, yeah, yeah. I just absolutely love them. And if you wanted to, yeah. to play in a, a Viking-esque manner, I, I think... Yeah. I think they do it better than any other faction. You know, that, that it's all about the melee. It's, you know, it's, and when you yeah, think about nice. it, like, and um, it's almost to the point you think you, invo you introduce someone using the original Vikings, but not, hopefully they get smashed too much or too demoralised and say, oh, by the way, look at these. These really do play like Vikings. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you've got the, uh, what is it, the runic dice, then you can try six or seven factions, you know, straight, basically straight out of the gate anyway. Mm. So what? a bit yeah i think you're right i mean vikings are a very good intro faction probably I, I, i'd not consider normans for that but i guess they could also be pretty pretty easy to pick up um if, if i'm honest though i've been more drawn toward crusades that's probably my sort of preferred area of history okay so um, crusades is interesting i i, I love the uh, crusade book so which factions do you have you got and do you play there uh so that one's still work in progress i've got a massive uh audience start army that's definitely my sort of 
baby. Really? And, and you like playing them, do you? Um, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, and this is not obviously just my personal thing, but they've got the most style. I love their whole theme, their style. The dice look really sexy. The battle board looks great. All the names are kind of, you know, very dark and gothic and grim, as a Teutonic Order should be. Um, because sometimes they can feel a little bit like you are... You're basically suffering through the whole game because every pretty much every good ability you have, you've got to be removing your own figures, which is quite sometimes quite rough, especially in, in a scenario with you know, massacre or survival points. Yeah, but yeah. Quite, you know they're very thematic. And at the end of the day, I mean, for me, silence. It's not a, a, a competitive game. It's a chance to have fun and tell some stories. And so they definitely scratch the itch for me. Mm. I, I must admit, I've, I've tried them a few times, and they I, th I find the battle ball quite hard to, to work efficiently yeah. compared to others maybe yeah. maybe they're hard to use um maybe i haven't got the composition of my war bands quite right for them um but yeah you're right you always got to have those two units of levy which you're constantly trying to get rid of and or a unit of mounted warriors sitting behind your mounted knights to, to sacrifice yeah. one of them to um and that's how i i played them but i've not had not had a huge amount of success but i do like those teutonic sort of orders and um they feel, do yeah. do look great they look really yeah. really great um what so what other factions? crusades then? um so the order start guys can pretty much double for baltic crusaders pretty happily uh, i think mm. there's a couple of teutonic order players who who jump them around a bit uh baltic board is nice nothing wrong with it um not they, 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 they yeah. seem to be the com competition go-to army don't they um, that's the thing you, you you very much feel like you're playing the upgunned kind of up armored version of the uh, order stat and there's nothing wrong with that uh, i guess it, you do feel like you're not quite playing the theme of the army so much it it, it does feel a bit more generic given that the crusades board is, is meant to cover a huge kind of you know range of options mm. uh, but they're very very strong and they're good fun to play so nothing wrong with that um i'm looking at trying out at some point the eastern princes as well going a, a bit further east Ooh. they look like a lot i've um, never which, i've never played them never tried them to be fair they look really interesting i mean they look like they've got an interesting mix of infantry and cavalry and some of some of their uh, abilities just feel really again really really thematic you know with the uh getting your uh drusian head together and you know <laughs> going off and smashing whether it be teutonics or well, so, so i mean my one of my favorites is the mongol isn't it I don't play them, but they, again, they look great. They are, they are, really they are yeah. superb with that war drummer. Um, as, a, as, a, as a faction, I would say, if, if used carefully, I think it's probably one of the most powerful um, war bands. Fact, certainly, yeah. certainly in that book, I think. I, I think it's a little bit scenario driven. I mean, if you're going to do Clash of Warlords, sure. I think, I, th I think they, you know, they absolutely rock. I think some of the other ones yeah. where you've got to pick up a bit of um, treasure and then you're walking and every time you walk, you're walking like you're walking into to light going and every time you pick up a fatigue, but it's kind, kind of ballsy yeah. really, but it doesn't quite work. But I, I, I yeah, like the Mongols. Yeah. I do yeah. like the Mongols. The faction I've been having a lot of fun with recently is uh, Pagan Peoples. Hmm. Who are, um, they're a weird one. I mean, I just really enjoy the fact that you, you can basically teleport your guys around from forest to forest. <laughs> yeah. And cause your opponent basically to play whack a ball. Yeah. So have you, so you say you've not really looked at the Age of Hannibal then? Hannibal, not really, no. Uh, I mean, I, I only got uh, Age of Invasions fairly recently and I'm looking at playing around with the Goths from that at some point. Uh, but that's definitely a bit further down the line once I finish the pagan roos and the pagan peoples uh hannibal looks interesting to be honest with you i'm a lot more hopeful about something like age of caesar coming out caesar not yeah not, yeah I, I must admit i'm uh, alexander's the one i'm waiting for oh really <laughs> yeah well i've got um i mean you've got, already got greeks already and i've got uh, macedonians so i'm sitting waiting for those to come nice. out and, and i'm i'm probably going to buy an indian army they can't not have indians they can't um, exactly <laughs> What do you think Alexander is going to add to the game? I mean, it feels like every book so far adds a, a bit of it, like, you know, whether Big Saga or Lima's campaign or something. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think they're going to encourage interplay between Age of Hannibal and Age of Alexander and even Age of Caesar when that comes out. I think there'll be more crossover uh, uh, permitted. Yeah. Uh, I, I, do, I do think sometimes cross books, which is something I was going to ask you in a bit, some of the some of the ages seem stronger than other ages it appears um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's interesting but i, I mean I'm, I'm, 
I'm hoping that there'll be there'll be balance between Alexander, Hannibal, and you know Caesar. Um, that that will be good. Um, I don't know what else they can add really. Um, I mean, they've done the campaigns thing, limes, as you say. Um, they tried the epic. Uh, not sure that's yeah. taken off. Um, yeah, yeah so, it'd be interesting. That there, there, there has to be a twist. They they can't give it without a twist. There must be something. Yeah, I think you're right. There's got to be some some little kind of thing in there. Me and my friends are really hoping for a uh, siege thing at some point. Oh, really? I don't know that Caesar would be the right, the right place to introduce it necessarily. Um, I know they're talking about doing a hundred a hundred years war uh, universe at some mm. point. I've heard that, that as well. I've yeah, that'd be fun. that'd be that'd be really colourful. Have all those French knights. That would be uh -huh. that would look I'd immense. I think it'd, it'd be quite hard to uh, to balance it. I mean, if you're going to play a kind of thematic English force, you're going to use a lot of longbows, and presumably mm -hmm. that's going to be quite quite tricky to balance. So it doesn't just become a kind of shooting gallery for for one side. But uh, it'd, be no, it'd, it'd be interesting. Of course, the developers of the game are all French. Will they tweak <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> all of a sudden, the French start winning every time. You think, ah, oh, revenge! Oh, yeah. it's, take, it's taken <laughs> seven hundred years, but finally they're beating us at, uh, <laughs> at Gracie and, and yeah, edging for and. <laughs> 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 that will be quite amusing but no that that would be good but i i have to say i think that'll be a few years off i, I mean i know uh, sword point have you heard of those rules heard of it not played it yet there's 28 mil but it's quite large but uh, wayne who i play a lot he, he's yeah. been involved with those rules and uh i know they released a uh, 100 years wars supplement which has been well received oh, yeah. okay. um, but again you need a lot of figures for that it's not like as you say you need three four hundred figures i think maybe, maybe oh, less wow. so you, you need to big... uh, kind of uh hell caesar sort of thing mm, exactly I, I would say probably even a bit bigger probably even a bit bigger than hell caesar when you look at the units i mean i watch wayne and his games and sometimes the you know the bow units have got 30 figures in them oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, well exactly so i mean the cavalry might be 12s i think i've, I've tried it once or twice a couple of times and um wayne's been pushing me to try it again I, 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 i've got to try it again so i will have a go wayne honestly <laughs> <laughs> honest wayne i will um but now that they look good as well but as i say the hundred years wars thing seems to have been well received there and i think um the fact that they the other manufacturers releasing figures for that you would think yeah. would be good in the long term for for saga as well which is is a positive sure. thing Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I think we're all kind of hoping that Saga takes off in a big way and becomes. But I, I don't know about dominant, but definitely becomes one of the kind of leading games in this sort of sort of field. You know, I think it is already. I think it is already. I mean, you look. I mean, you look at the Discord channel. You look at you obviously look at Rogers Discord channel. And, oh yeah. Uh, the, you know the coverage they got from all over the world and in America. Um, we well, actually did, well, I actually played an online game with uh, Mike of Saga Ohio. And, oh, uh, nice. uh, over zoom um Brilliant. which was great and and the, the community is huge and, and the you know i know there's people you know like andy Lyons. he's been over to america to play in competitions and traveled over to germany and, and people travel to strasbourg where french grand melee is so there is a quite a strong yeah. community w within saga itself and I, th I think um it's certainly not dying at all but, but i do think uh Studio Tomahawk need to keep it fresh, and you're right in what you say. They need to keep on adding things, and some things work, and mm -hmm. some things don't. Um, Age of Invasions. You, you've looked at the Goths. Uh, any other factions? Goths are really fun. Um, I'm going to get this wrong. Is it Last Romans or Late Romans? Yeah, it's one of the Romans. Romans. Yeah. One of the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> Last Romans might be. Um, there was a Roman uh, Vikings, right? Yeah, there was one in Vikings. Yeah. I like that. Actually. That's a nice faction to play. Um, yeah, I mean, um, Invasions looks like a lot, a lot of fun. We're actually playing the Limes campaign right now. Me and well, Limus, Limus, Limes, how, yeah. how do you say it anyway? Yeah, yeah. Me and a friend are playing through it right now. Uh, we're, we're being very, very cheeky and using different different boards. He's playing Yom's Vikings and I'm playing uh, Orishta. So obviously completely ahistorical. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a great campaign. That's a, a, lot, a lot of fun so far. I think if I was going to get more into the actual Invasions kind of, kind of setting, I'd probably go with Britons. Just to, uh, from what I've heard, they're not the most, they're not, they're, not, they're not the kind of strongest board out there. But I think it's that chance of doing kind of Arthurian sort of war bag that really. Yeah, really I mean, it's, I mean, if, if you if, if you want to just have a good game and enjoy this, the galvanized thing, I think it's quite hard to make it work yeah. well. And I think it 
kind of limits you a little bit in, 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 to almost to a tight ball where, you, where sometimes you want to be yeah. spread out. But um, I've, I've played against them and uh, I, I used the Huns once against them quite oh, efficiently. Nice. Yeah. The Huns, because I use my Mongols as Huns and that they, they do play nice. But uh, yeah. I must admit, Age of Invasions, I've played them and um, they're okay. But I, I must admit, I, I do love Hannibal. And uh, you, you, yeah. you, you still keep going back to Age of, Age of Vikings for me. Uh, and even Crusades. So uh, the Invasions has been good, but it needs to, they need to keep it fresh and do something new. And you're right in what you say. You're, you're absolutely spot on. There, there needs to be a twist in there somewhere, which makes it work. But um, twice, it's quite sort of thing, yeah. No, no, very much so. Okay, so real quickly then, um, you're, I'm interested in your campaigns then. So tell me about your right. campaigns. Yeah. So I mentioned that we sort of got, we sort of got in the saga together as a group. Um, we basically figured, okay, we've all got slightly disparate armies. One of those plays, Lords of the Wild from the Fantasy Supplement, uh, has some Vikings kicking around. Another one is really into Asia of Invasions. Another one still is mostly doing Dwarves. And then there's me doing um, every army I can. <laughs> yeah. um, we figured, why don't we sort of start each kind of jump outside of our, our comfort zone a bit, start a, a new faction from whether a new book or just a, you know kind of something totally new for us start from scratch start all together at the same time and make a kind of little league um, out of it which has worked really really well so what we did i wrote up a little series of rules which i can send along to you um yeah, yeah. basically we all started at two points uh plus a warlord so first game we played wooden oaths two points per player plus a warlord we used the first edition rule of the war generating two saga dice rather than one so you've got a bit more you know flexibility and uh, dice to play with uh and then after that we're doing a game per month and you're trying to make it so you're painting a full a, a full point per month um mm. and then we have a, a little league table where you play a game you win a point you win a game you get another point but most of the points you beat there you can actually earn for this little league thing magic uh are actually from painting up units so it's a very hobby focused thing um some of us mm. are using you kind of ward the ward uh, what do you call it the uh, experience traits from the book of battles which is fine mm. but most it's it's it, it's a kind of hobby thing it is to encourage people to jump in try something new and get some fully painted armies uh, on the table what a great idea uh, yeah it's working really well so far uh, everyone's at three points now i think mm. and uh we found the london wargaming guild just a few days after starting it so we've got probably 10 or so guys from the guild jumping in who can join us uh again mostly playing age of vikings but i think a few of them are eyeing up some of the uh islamic factions from crusades hmm. uh, maybe even a couple of uh, Greculi players too which would be quite cool oh really <laughs> yeah in hannibal so, so um, okay so so, the, so when you play a game then so you're playing six turn are you are you doing yeah. clash of warlords just keeping it simple are you doing preset terrain or are you are you um is someone actually putting the train down for you or are you actually sure. so, you roll um, the terrain using so the universal for, for terrain? Game, we we just played uh wooden oaths which is the um it's the full player scenario from i love Marvel's i book. love that game yeah, i'm playing it on wednesday it's absolute chaos uh everyone hates I each love other. it i know i know it's great <laughs> it's right it's up my that, street that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's brilliant. We played that. We we used all of the uh, Book of Battles rules for generating terrain and moving around and stuff. Uh, with the London Wargaming Guild guys, we're just playing uh, our Clash of Wars right now because they're still new. I just want to kind of get them into the game and enjoying it. Um, but I think they're very early on in their sort of sort of saga career, if you like. Uh, I'm really keen to get them into, into, the, into the Book of Battles soon because I think there's a lot of stuff there that changes the game in a good way and gives you lots of, of, of options to play it, whether you want to play narrative that, or competitively. That Book of Battles is easily the best thing they've done in years and years. Um, I, 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 for, for me, it, what it does, it creates almost a non-competition friendly club game, variable yeah. club game. Uh, you couldn't do it in, in Grand Melee. You have to have preset to, uh, to terrain sure. to make games quick you've got to play scenarios but for a club game i think the book of battles <clears throat> it's easily it's just 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 smart it's smart business and that's did you ever talking of campaigns did you ever try um the age of wolves so one of us uh in the group actually has the age of wolf age of the wolf book and we're looking at trying to retrofit it to um side of v2 I've not had a great look at it yet, but I've heard a lot of really positive things about it. So I've, really I've, we played it. We played it at Farnborough, and um, it worked quite well. Um, it does need tweaking. Um, yeah. 
but it does work because you end up with units. You start with a unit of eight and you can go down to seven or six. If, and if you lose a unit, you lose figures. So the next time you play, your unit's smaller. Or if you, and then you roll with abilities of your warlord and he gets extra special abilities or you can lose them or if your warlord dies. So it's quite, it's quite clever. Um, there are some flaws in it, but um, yeah. it may make some really interesting games and uh, it's worth a look. And the best thing I can suggest is look at it and take out the bits that you like and ignore the bits you don't think are going to work. Yeah, but, but, there's, sure. but, but there's some smart things in there, some really smart things in there. Mm. Actually, you know what? I think I heard that was it that supplement that had the rules for attacking a uh, a uh, Mott and Bailey type thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There's some bits oh, and really? pieces. There's some bits and pieces in there, um, which, which is well worth looking. If, if you can't get hold of them, let mm -hmm. me know and I'll, I'll send mine through to you. You can have a look at them and you can send them back to me whenever or bring them to Warfare because I'm not going to use them again. So if you can't get hold of them, contact me and I'll send them. Thank you. Very oh, pleasure. Kind, yeah. We'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasures all mine. It's that sort of thing where, you know, the more ways of playing the game, the longer it lasts and the, and the more interest you keep it in the community sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, so, um, I mean, the other thing is, if, of course, if you ever want to come up to Reading and have a game, I'm sure I can find you a game. Just up the M4. Love to. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to come to the uh, Grand Melee. But we play on a Wednesday night. So if you want to come to that and have a game, I can arrange a game. So if you're looking for games, you and your colleagues, even on a Sunday, if you bring three of, three of your your, your, yeah. your your team up, you can play three or four of us from. Um, we'll have a little uh, low key competition game, fun that day, and and we we can do that. And uh, just let me know. Anyway, great. listen, I, th I think I think we're done. Listen, great to talk to you, Louis. Um, good to see another sorry head out there. So many who love the game as much as I do. I mean, oh, thank you very much for having me on. And, no, uh, no, no, uh, it's good and. Um, keep promoting the game and uh and and, and uh we'll we'll I'll, I'll look forward to playing you across the table soon likewise cheers mate Bye. what a great chat that was isn't it great to to speak to someone with such enthusiasm for our rule set um if you've got any comments please add them below um tell us what you think about what we said ideas for improving it and bringing our game forward anyway if you like what you saw like subscribe and share. Take care.